When we're trying to find the root of a function using the newton raphson method, we're going to use a combination of iterative solutions. So let's just say we're guessing a zero x zero value there, as well as linear interpolation from the tangent line of the graph. So what we mean is if we guess a value of x zero, we would need to check whether that value is actually giving us the intercept of the graph. In this instance, we can see that it's clearly not. What newton raphson is then going to, dis to do is that at this point that is now in red, we can work out what the gradient of this curve is, and from that gradient, draw a tangent line on that graph. From that tangent line, we can then calculate where the intercept on the x-axis is, and that new intercept should be closer to the root. We then again iterate and check is that new x1 value close to the real y is equal to zero value. And if it's not, like we can see here, we again calculate the tangent line, and from that tangent line we find the intercept where y is equal to zero for that tangent line, and repeat this until we get closer and closer to the actual intercept. And at some point we will match that intercept. So looking at the step by step on how to solve this mathematically, what we are going to do is firstly guess or choose a value for x0. So that is the black that we've got in our diagram. From that we can now calculate the value of f of x. So we will be given a value of f of x and we are trying to, we don't have the graph, we only have the function value. We are trying to now find what is the intercept. The third step is going to be to calculate the derivative of that function, so that can help us find the slope of the graph. From the slope of the graph, we want to calculate what is the new x1, assuming a linear tangent line that is going to intersect at y is equal to zero. So that is this tangent line that we've got in red. We want to know what is the slope, sorry. We want to know what is the slope of this red line based on the derivative and then the intercept where we're going to find x1. So to do that, we know that the slope of the graph is equal to the derivative. And we also know that the slope of the line is equal to the difference in height, change in height over the change in distance. So that will be our y1 value minus the function at f of x0 divided by the change in the sorry, the change in the height over the change in the horizontal distance, which is going to be x1 minus x0. However, we have said that we want to know where this intersects at the x-axis. So that will mean that the y value is equal to 0. So if that y1 value is equal to 0, we can simplify this as the f prime x is equal to minus f of x naught divided by x1 minus x naught. If we rearrange this, we can then write this as x1, so we move that onto the left hand side, is equal to the x naught value minus the f of x divided by f prime x. So that will give us the new x1 value. More conveniently, we can write that the xn value plus 1, sorry, the xn plus 1 value is equal to the previous xn guess minus the f of xn divided by the f of prime xn. The next step, step 5, is going to be repeating this. So we're going to use x1 or xn plus 1 as the new starting point. And then we will repeat until the xn value is equal to the xn plus 1 value. Or what this will also mean is we repeat until the f of x is equal to 0. If we have to quickly have an example on this, and, asked, and we are asked to find what is the root of x3 plus x minus 5, in order to solve this using newton raphson we are going to need the derivative of this equation. So the f 
prime x value of this is going to be 3x squared plus 1. And we're going to use newton raphson which said that x of n plus 1 is going to be equal to the x of n minus the fx divided by f prime x. Or in other words, this is going to equal to f Oh, sorry, x of n plus 1 is equal to x of n minus x to the 3 plus x minus 5 divided by 3x squared plus 1. For this example, I'm going to guess as our first value for x naught is going to equal to 1. So I already got these solutions in front of me, so I'm going to need you to just go through this slowly if you want to check. But if I take x naught equal to 1, and I take x0 equal to 1 and put it into this equation, as well as, sorry, not that equation. If I put it into the fx and the fx prime value and solve for this, I will get f of x0 will equal to minus 3. f prime x of 0 is going to equal to 4. And then if I correct myself and I put those numbers into xn plus 1, so that's the top of the screen now, our new x1 value is going to equal to 1.75. I can now do the same thing and figure out what is the f of x1 and get the value for that, as well as the f prime x1 and get the value for that. I can now repeat this process and find x2, and x2 will be equal to 1.542. Doing the same thing for f x2 and f prime x2. Using the top equation, I can now calculate x3 is equal to 1.5163. And I can continue this process over and over until I get x4, x5, and so on. Okay, so I've completed the table there a little bit more thoroughly. And as we can see, as we move down from x1 down to x5, you'll see that the numbers go from 1, from 1 to 175 to 1542, and they start getting closer at 1516, 15198, and at x5 is attempt we now get exactly the same value to three to four decimal places. If we look at the function values in the middle, so the fx value of naught starts at minus three, so it is not actually too close to zero. But as we move our way down, you can see that we get seven times seven point six eight times ten to the negative seven, and then the last value in this list four point two six times ten to the negative fourteen. So that is approximately equal to zero. So we're close to where we need to be. So therefore, in terms of iterating, we could probably stop at this point.